On May 20th, the Netherlands Atlantic Association organized a program with senior diplomat and international crisis management expert Peter Veit. In the Koninklijke Schouwburg in The Hague, he gave an introduction and took questions from a varied audience and from moderator Robert van der Roer. He asked me to say a few words about my own experiences in uh, dealing with insurgents and uh, of course also Kosovo. Um, and in the Ukraine you see that uh, the Russians are very keen to see uh, decentralization to be uh, implemented by the government. But you don't know what decentralization means in Putin terms. Does it mean real decentralization to the province or the uh, municipal levels? Or is it going to be a first step towards uh, separation and, um, and uh, rejoining uh, uh, Russia? Because why did we intervene in 1999 in, with, with NATO <coughs> and the airstrikes? That was because uh, of the uh, serious, persistent violations of human rights by the troops of Milosevic in Kosovo. There was no intention at that point to separate Kosovo from, uh, from Serbia. In fact, I remember that uh, during that period and in the immediate aftermath, in the planning documents and everything, uh, Kosovo was considered as a, uh, as a province of Serbia. The assumption was that it would remain so. Um, so it was controversial. Five member states didn't recognize Kosovo's independence, still haven't done so. Notwithstanding the fact that in 2010, the International Court of Justice gave a ruling that uh, the independence was not in violation of international law. I leave it at that, Robert. Thank you very much for giving me the occasion to say you this. You may applaud. Okay. What is your biggest achievement, your personal biggest achievement? You don't have to be modest. It sounds a bit sentimental, but it is your last days in Aceh or uh, in, in Macedonia where you see happy faces and people uh, tell you that they are really grateful that, not necessarily I myself, that it was NATO or the EU or Atisari uh, that they had bothered to help them. I thought you were going to refer to your dealings with the rebels in southern Serbia and Macedonia because there aren't many European diplomats, or even UN or Western diplomats, global diplomats that speak the language of rebels. And you proved that you could do it. Well, you have to, you have, to be careful what, have to be careful what I'm saying, but you have to show a certain empathy with, with them. I mean, they are not necessarily bad people. I mean, s some of them have very good, um, have a very, well, let's say, uh, 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 legitimate cause, uh, but it, it comes, there, there, is, there are sometimes very real grievances uh, among the people they represent, and um, in as much as they were compliant with what we wanted them to do, I had no problem with these guys. Who has a question for Peter Fett? Now, how do you think the European Union is going to be a, a strong chess player against Putin with only having soft power and no soft and no hard power? I, I'm really with the French on this. <coughs> I think the French have always insisted that the European Union should not be confined to soft power, but should also have a real military capability. And, um, uh, I'm a Dutch student from a Dutch grammar school and my question was uh, what is your opinion on uh, European uh, peacekeeping missions without the UN, uh, United Nations Security Council mandate? So my answer to you is I know that the European Union is more perhaps and more than, than NATO keen to have a proper legal base and by that I the preference would always be for a, a Security Council mandate. But I think that if, um, if, if there is no alternative and there is a compelling uh, case to uh, help people in need, uh, then I think uh, serious consideration should be given to, to move, regardless of Security Council um, agreement. Currently, the status quo in the Council, the European Council is 
uh, Germany saw searching, France willing to, uh, to intervene or at least to defend its interests abroad. Uh, what, what is your personal opinion? Um, what could be the solution to uh, breach this status quo and make uh, the European Union able to use its full potential? Um, you see there's a little bit of a nuance in those two uh, courses of action. But I think with Frau Merkel at this moment we are um, in safe hands and I think she is doing a very uh, heartening and encouraging job with, with the Russians. Peter, uh, thank you for sharing uh, with us your lessons in uh, multilateralism. Uh, show energy, show patience. In fact, there were more lessons, but there are too many to summarize. I'm pretty sure that we will be hearing from you in the future and that you will share your knowledge and experience with us again. Let me